What was I thinking when I started developing the new SWAT Corps into what it is today? I didn't think I was thinking. Uh, I just had that passion that was within my soul. Uh, passion, motorsport's always been a passion for me since I was four years old. I think I'm the only living person that went to the Germiston Street Race in 1948. I was four years old. I got a thrashing and that's all I remember because I didn't like the noise. My dad was a racer and it grew up with me all my life, but we always went to motor racing and I was gonna race. I built my first racing car when I was 16 years, 17 years old. It didn't work, obviously. Uh, I raced in the early 60s and then, like all good racing drivers, you run out of money, but totally. So I decided it's time to study and it was only in 1980 when I came back, in 19, early 80s that I came back into the sport. And I was in business. I was a merchant banker. I was in the investment world. I did uh, some very big corporate deals. I didn't have time to go national racing. I just wanted to race uh, over weekends and cars I identified with, such as some of the cars you see here. Uh, we got the old driving track and my partners eventually decided this is not gonna work. So in late 90s, I decided I got the site proclaimed for motorsport and the money I was gonna spend on my two sons racing in England and in Europe, they were racing there already. Um, but they said to me, what do you want? Do you want chartered accountants or do you want racing drivers? I said, I want both. They said, you're not gonna get both. You're only gonna get one. So I said, well, then it's more prudent to become chartered accountants. But with that money, what will be great for us to have a place to go and race to where we are exclusive and we can enjoy our motor racing because of the intensity of what we are, what we wanted. And so I built it. And the family said, what on earth are you doing? And I said, leave me alone. I know what I'm doing, but it's a passion of the soul. And what SWAT Corps has done is enable people as far as possible with motorsport to go, motor racing that is practical, affordable, and accessible. The greater proportion of people that go motor racing are participative. Everybody thinks we're great, they're going to be famous, but they're not aspirational to think that they're going to come and race a Formula One car here at Swartkops. Um, that world has changed. Seeing my sons weren't going to ever be professional, but they would be, and they, every father says this, they're pretty good, uh, but they are participative. Uh, and they enjoy their motor racing, and it's very competitive out there. But it's a day's motorsport. And it has attracted a lot more people into the sport and prepared to invest. But more than that, uh, through the facility, creating the skid pants, the 4x4 circuits and other facilities, what it has done is that it has brought a lot of people in and also attracted the interest of a number of manufacturers or franchise holders in South Africa who want to show their product and the capabilities of their product in a safe place. It's also a social thing for many people, but that's association of product and activity and people involvement, which is a very big positive, I believe, in the competitive world of the motor industry. It's not a business in that sense that the returns are very marginal. I don't earn a salary, never have earned a salary. I'm not dependent on it, fortunately. Uh, but it has created employment and employment opportunities and small businesses that focus on motorsport. And they have a facility uh, that is, again, affordable. My focus, obviously, is still the historic, so I think of the past, not of the future, but we've got to cater for the future. Um, and I've been so, so fortunate that I could take the icons of the 60s, many of them, the great races of the 60s, of the 60s, Mike Knight, David Piper, Richard Atwood. There's a string of very famous racing drivers that have joined us on our annual international uh, passion for speed, it used to be known as the David Piper International. 
Obviously, a facility like this with its high speed motoring uh, is dangerous. Uh, there is the element of risk. Uh, we have full medical teams always available. We won't let people go onto the circuit without having medical backup. Uh, but we've had some unfortunate accidents. These things happen. They happen, could happen to them on the road. But the one thing that we do focus on, if there is any doubt on any corner or any part of the circuit where somebody could have an accident and where there could be injury, you provide for it and you design the circuit and you cater for it. As far as the um, side activity, the other activities at Swarkops is that uh, for many, many years now, Victoria Old Motor Car Club have had their annual cars in the park. Uh, the motor shows have increasingly becoming very popular throughout the country. You in Seventh Heaven, if you're a car person, when you come here on the Saturday or the Sunday and you just see what the heritage of the motor car is. For me, I've got a car collection of over 60 cars. If I tell you, these are the cars of the, fifth, of the 60s that you see around here, other than the D-Type. Um, they were, it was an amazing era. The Galaxy, which this huge two-ton car that they actually dared and had the cheek and the gall to race. The cars that I loved most to race were the smaller sports cars that were produced in South Africa, like the Protea of the 50s and then the GSM Darts. They were amazing motor cars that were built here in South Africa. And they raced, the, the Darts raced internationally as well. And I, I don't know, because I love them so much, I think I've got five of them. And I've got a Flamingo, two Flamingos. But there's the one car that I really loved. And that was called the Lolette. It was built by a hot rodder in, on the East Rand. Uh, the car was called Lolette because it had a Corvette engine and a Lola, part of it was his wife's name. And I had a lot of wins in the car, but it also was a very dangerous motor car. It had a big V8 in it. Um, it had a different type of back axle. It used to really be very, very fast and you're very exposed in the car. And at another racetrack, one Saturday morning, I was testing the car and at the end of the straight, they had a runoff area, but the owner of the track had a tractor and he was, I don't know, he was mowing the lawn or something. And the brakes failed in the car, but totally. And I had no option but to hit the barriers and I barrel rolled over it and then bounced back on the track in pieces. I, you know, and I hear the petrol tank ticking, the pumps ticking away, I could smell petrol and I was stunned. I couldn't get out of the car. And then eventually I felt a bit of life when I crawled out of the car. So, and it took us 16 years to rebuild the car. I'm very pleased I've rebuilt it, but I've never raced it again. It's lethal. Um, it's never built for what it can do or it's capable of doing. But it's got a history. It's got a history and so uh, I still love it. Because today these type of cars around us are expensive to run, you don't want to break them. Spares are very expensive, you can get the spares. My relationship with David Piper, that goes back to, um, I just memory, to 1988, he came to South Africa and he raced at, um, he raced in Cape Town, then East London, and then they had a Durban Street race. It's the time they were rebuilding Kyle Army. And we had just got hold of the old driving circuit, Swarkov's driving circuit with the driving. <laughs> and of course I had the Mr. Gore to go to approach David and said, David, you remember me? Of course he didn't. Uh, but I mean, why don't you bring your group of people to Swarkov's? And I, he battled to say the word Swarkov's to start with. He had to get his tongue around it. Where is it? No, it's only a few k's up north of Kailan. But then somebody told him what it was and he kindly declined my invitation. But we kept contact and when we rebuilt the, the new Swartpups, because he raced 
brought the series out from time to time. And I raced in his series with the Thompson. My son was in a Lola. My other son was in the Chevron. Um, we kept contact and when I built the new Swart Pups, uh, Mike Knight came out and inspected it and he said, we're on. And since that was in 2002, that we had our first David Piper International. It's today called the Passion of Speed, um, but it's what, uh, what, 21, 22 years later, uh, and it's still going strong. But anybody that drives through the gate at Swartkorps must have the feeling I'm coming to have a great day. Whether I'm a competitor, whether I'm a marshal, whether I'm a part of the administration, or whether, and more importantly, I'm a spectator. This is the place to be, and it's, I'm gonna have a great day. And that's the story. It's not Peter the Toy, it's Swartkorps, and its future is in the hands of the next generation, not me.